The following is a presentation of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League. Ladies and gentlemen, Sleeman Breweries proudly presents the Western Ontario Super Hockey League Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League Podcast. I am your host, Andrew Rogers. It's uh, great to be back with you guys once again, and thank you very much for tuning in and uh, to your continued uh, support and viewership. Uh, this is episode number three, and it's a jam-packed one. Boy, what a weekend it was this past weekend in the Western Ontario Super Hockey League. Opening weekend, that's right, banner raising night in Alora. Uh, what a game and what a start by the defending champs. The Alora Rocks making a huge statement in game number one. And uh, we also had a, a pair of expansion teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe in Tilbury between the Tilbury Bluebirds and the Delhi Flames. Uh, we'll get to all of that. Uh, we have a lot coming up on this upcoming podcast. It is a jam-packed episode. We got three guests on tap for this uh, week's podcast. Uh, head coach of the Delhi Flames, Doug Cooper, joins me uh, as, as in a little bit here. Uh, we also have from the Aaron Blitz, uh, Clayton Pederak. Uh, he joins us from the Aaron Blitz forward over there. Uh, he made history over the weekend. He would score the first uh, career, uh, sorry, the first goal in team history for the Aaron Blitz in Washell team history. So kudos to him. And uh, we also have uh, big ups, uh, our last and uh, third and final guest on this week's episode of the podcast is Ryan Polidari. Uh, goaltender of the Tilbury Bluebirds, who backstopped his team to a 22 save shutout, the first shutout in uh, in the Washel this season. And uh, you know, again, they'll keep the trivia questions coming because he is also the first goalie to get a shutout in his team's short and uh, just starting out history. So great ups to them, and uh, we got them coming up here in a little while. But first. We want to do. Uh, we want to touch on some things. I'll get you guys updated here on the uh, Rogers uh, Rogers Power Rankings uh, in the Washoe League uh, after weekend number one. Uh, we'll get you updated on the standings. Uh, take a look at the uh, weekend that was, and we'll give you an in depth uh, there as well as some highlights provided for, by Five One Nine Sports Online and Darren Stevenson does a great job there, and uh, we really appreciate his assistance here. Um, so we'll go over the games on the weekend. We'll get you tuned up for this upcoming weekend. Big weekend coming up. Uh, four games on tap. Uh, a lot of home openers, so that's going to be great. And uh, we're going to see some more action here. And uh, <clears throat> we'll also, uh, yeah, uh, make sure to focus in and hone in on the three stars. As, uh, as well as, like I say, the interviews with uh, Doug, Clayton, and Ryan. Uh, but like I say, no further ado, we'll get into the games now. Uh, first of all, like I say, we want to look at our... Uh, at our weekend that was, <clears throat> as you guys can see here, we have uh, we get we had the Alora Rocks. Uh, they uh, started their defending uh, Sleeman Cup champion season uh, with a big fifteen to two victory. Before we break down this game, uh, we want to send you actually we want to give you a little uh, bit of a treat here. We have a highlight pack of the game, courtesy of Five Hundred Nine Sports Online and Darren Stevenson. So take a look. It's a new season in the Western Ontario Super Hockey League, and here come the defending Sleeman Cup champions, the Allure Rocks, bringing the championship trophy to center ice for the pregame festivities. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2021-22 Sleeman Cup champion. The Rock 
Hawks hosting the Aaron Blitz, who are one of the new teams in the league this year. The Blitz playing their first game in franchise history. Opening period, it's the home side striking first. This is Chad Heron coming in. He hits the post, but Steve Dole scores on the rebound. That's the first goal of the season. 1-0 Alora, and they bury another one. 14 seconds later, Spencer Gourlay with a steal, and he sets up Chad Heron. That was the start of a big night for Heron. 2-0 for the Rocks. A few minutes later, how about this feed from Brendan Woods? He goes cross-ice to Charlie Stevens, and he roofs it. Last year's playoff MVP, giving his team a three-goal advantage. Later in the period, this time Stevens is dishing. He feeds Zach Cameron in front for the goal. The Rocks offense comes out firing. Cameron makes it 5 nothing. Still in the first, here is Ty Campbell scoring his first goal of the year. The Rocks scoring seven times in the opening period. They have a big lead after 20 minutes. Second period now, more Rocks offense. Spencer McCormick rips it wide, but Chad Heron is there, and he cashes in. Heron and the Rocks with an eight-goal advantage. Back the other way, here's a big moment for the Blitz. Clayton Patrick writing his name into the record books. He scores the first goal in franchise history. Patrick buries the rebound in front. Later in the period, this is Colin Dunn doing Colin Dunn things. He comes over and absolutely robs Max Lightfoot. Terrific stop from the Rocks netminder. He was solid when he was tested. Back to the offense, Spencer Gourlay finding space in front, and he roofs it for the goal. The captain makes it 9-1 for the Rocks. Still in the second, the rebound is loose in front. Liam Galton grabs it, and he puts it in. Galton and the Blitz, scoring two goals in their first ever game. But this night belonging to the champs, Chad Heron scores an absolute beauty on this play. Heron had five goals for the Rocks on Friday night. They opened defense of the Sleeman Cup title with a huge win on home ice. The Rocks beat the Blitz. 15-2 is the final. Yeah, guys, so to break this game down, it was quite a game for the Alora Rocks. Uh, big ups here uh, to Chad Heron, the first star in Washoe this week. Uh, he scored five times and added an assist for six points. Leads all Washoe scorers easily. Uh, big ups also to other players that I want to mention in this game. Spencer Gourley had a goal and three assists. Charlie Stevens, two goals and two assists. Uh, Matteo Condotta, two goals and two assists for him. And, uh, you know, a great game also by Brendan Woods, number 11 for the Allure Rocks with four helpers. Uh, big ups also to the Laura native Luke Holger. He had three assists in the hockey game as well. Uh, but yeah, big, uh, big ups to them. Laura making a big statement in their first game uh, in the defense of the Sleeman Cup championship. Uh, Colin Dunn getting the win for the Allura Rocks and the Allura Rock net. Uh, great to see him back and uh, continuing his ways. Uh, last year, he just dominated and uh, continuing that in the first game of the season. Uh, over on the Aaron Blitz side, uh, want to give a shout out, obviously, to our guest who's coming up later, Clayton uh, Pederak. Uh, Pederak. Uh, he had the first goal in Aaron Blitz Washell history. Uh, the second goal of the game went to Liam Galton of the Laura, or sorry, Aaron Blitz. And uh, that was all that she wrote for them. Uh, the goaltending duties in the game split. Braden Kelso starting, Matthew McCabe relieving him. Uh, but it wasn't a great uh, evening. Uh, to say the least, for the Aaron Blitz goaltenders. However, like I say, one game, uh, only one win. Uh, you don't get multiple wins for putting up that many goals. But, uh, you know, a lot of room for growth. And uh, we look for, I'll, I look forward to, to the interview later on with Clayton. Uh, and uh, we'll talk more about uh, first game of the year there. And uh, much thanks to Darren Stevenson of 519 Sports Online for that highlight pack as well. Our second game of the weekend saw the Tilbury Bluebirds uh, dismantle the, the Delhi Flames, overwhelming the Flames. Uh, seven to zip was the final there. Badly out shooting also the, uh, the Tilbury Bluebirds, badly out shooting Delhi 51 to 22. Uh, big ups to Delhi goaltender uh, Cody Odevarsher. Excuse me, Cody. I apologize, Ben. Uh, but he, he made 44 saves in the hockey game. This score could have been uh, bloated even more if it wasn't for him in the nets for Delhi. On the other side of things, Tilbury, great uh, performance there by Ryan Polidari. Uh, he had the shutout 22 saves. He is our third guest in this week's edition of the podcast. Uh, we look forward to speaking with him in, uh, in a few moments here. But uh, 
Yeah, I want to give a special shout out here to Austin Broussard, goal and an assist for him. Uh, we had uh, another two point night uh, that was given to Brock Gram uh, Grambois, uh, two assists for him. And uh, the third one that we want to uh, shout out to is Dylan Denome. He had a goal and an assist for the uh, for the Tilbury Bluebirds. Uh, and also, we want to give a special, uh, a little bit of a special shout out here to Stefan Crevier uh, of the Tilbury Bluebirds. He scored the first goal in Bluebirds history. Del High will have to wait until a, this upcoming Saturday when they go to Stratford to take on the Stratford Fighting Irish. We'll get to all of that in a minute. But uh, yeah, so just to give you guys kind of an update on our power rankings here as we look ahead to those power rankings, Raji's Raji's power rankings. The Allura Rocks continue to be in the number one seed as they started last week. Tilbury jumps all the way up to number two. You have Tilsonburg in the same, in the three spot. They drop down one, Strathroy in the four, Stratford in the five, Al Alvinson in the six and seven is the Plattsville Lakers. Those five teams did not play in the first weekend, so their standings are really just altered by one because of the Tilbury Bluebirds moving into that second spot. Delhi takes the eighth spot in Aaron Blitz take the ninth after getting blitzed out by the Alora rocks. Uh, but uh, yeah, so those are Raji's power rankings for the week. Um, and like you said, opening weekend there, as you guys can see, as we move to the standings, those are pretty, uh, uh, you guys could have figured this one out, but you have Alora at two and O or one and O Tilbury one and O Delhi O and one Aaron blitz O and one. Uh, we have every other team though that hasn't played, I believe uh, starting up this weekend. Uh, except for the Plattsville Lakers, who won't start until Friday, October 14th, when they go to Strathroy to play the Jets. But we'll get into week number two in a minute here. But as you can see, this is how the standings shake out as of right now. Uh, but yeah, guys, breaking down the scores, 15-2 to two for the Allura Rocks uh, in this game. And then you have 7 nothing for Tilbury over the Delhi Flames. And then, yeah, we want to take a look at our leading scoreboard as we uh, look here. And again, you could kind of see this one coming, you know, all the scores there from the Allura Rocks in the top seven. Uh, Chad Heron leading the way, five in a, five goals and one assist uh, for six points. He had a huge game. He had a great day. Mateo Condotta, Spencer Gorley, Brendan Woods, and Charlie Stevens all with four apiece, while Luke Holzer and Zach Cameron had three. And then you have Tilbury, Otten Broussard, Dylan Denome and Brock Grambois uh, with two points apiece for them. Uh, and then, yeah, guys, uh, just to give you kind of an update as well here, as we look ahead to week number two, uh, again, this, this guy's is just kind of a recap and, a, and to set you up. Uh, the real meat of this podcast is always going to be the guests that come on here and speak with me because they, they are really the focus of all of this. But uh, we want to look ahead here to the uh, schedule for week number two. A lot of games to be uh, to, that are being played this weekend, four in total. It gets underway this upcoming Friday, October 7th. It's also Thanksgiving weekend, by the way, if you hadn't, uh, if you hadn't forgot. But uh, just a friendly reminder, yes, Thanksgiving weekend. Tilsonburg Thunder into Strathroy to play the Jets. It's the uh, Jets and Thunder season opening games. Thunder open on the road. Strathroy opening at home at their new arena, the Gemini Sportsplex. That goes at 7.30. Uh, the Alvinston Killer Bees open their season up against the defending uh, Sleeman Cup champion, 1-0 Alora Rocks. That goes on Friday, October the 7th at 8.30 from the Alora and District Community Center. The Thanksgiving weekend and our week number two uh, begin, uh, continues on Saturday, October the 8th. First up, it's the uh, Delhi Flames taking their 0-1 record in the, Strat in the Stratford and the William Alma Memorial Arena to uh, battle against the Stratford Fighting Irish, who will be opening their season with a home opener. A lot of things planned there in Stratford at the Almond for that game. That one gets underway at 4.30, come early for lots of prizes and lots of different things that they'll be giving away. Uh, and then our second game of the doubleheader on Saturday goes from Tilsonburg, the Tilsonburg Community Center for their home opener. Big night uh, planned in Tilsonburg as well as they welcome in the 1-0 Tilbury Bluebirds. I believe that's going to be an excellent contest between Tilbury and Tilsonburg. Uh, til obviously, Tilbury coming in after winning 7 0 in their opener, uh, going up against the Thunder, who were the runner up in last year's Slima Cup Championship uh, finals. And the Thunder will also be playing 2 and 2. So we'll see if uh, 
you know, fatigue in that second game of the weekend is of any issue for the Thunder. I'd imagine not, but you never know. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, like I said, uh, that was just kind of give you an idea of where we were at uh, with our weekend that was and uh, to give you guys kind of a, an idea of the weekend upcoming. So lots of good stuff. But uh, really, like I said, the meat of the interview is these guests that come on here and interview with me. And uh, they're the they're the most important part of this podcast. So uh, without further ado, our first interview is coming your way from Delhi. It's our head, uh, the head coach of the Delhi Flames. Doug Cooper, and we're going to start off our interviews now with him. So enjoy, sit back, relax, and uh, here we go. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's at this time on the Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast that I bring in my guest at this time. Uh, he is the head coach and general manager of the Dell High Flames, Doug Cooper. Doug, it's uh, great to have you on here, pal. Thanks a lot for uh, taking the time to do this with us, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Andrew, and thanks for having me on today. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great pleasure to speak with you. Um, you know, this is such an exciting time in our league. Obviously, we're one weekend in now, and uh, with the four expansion teams coming in, it's a lot of possibilities. When you only have five teams, it can be kind of tough when it comes to competitive balance, but adding four new teams is definitely uh, exciting nonetheless. Um, take us through the process for you and how this all kind of came about. Um, was it something that was talked about for a while? Like, uh, Kind of give us a back uh, backstage pass, if you will. Well, originally they had talked to me back in June about coming on board with the club. Okay. Uh, I've, I've known Chris Longthorne, the owner, for a long time. And I was the general manager of the North Middlesex Stars of the Provincial Junior Hockey League. Okay. So Chris asked me back in June if I would come on board to be the general manager. And I thought about it, should I or should I not, because I was leaving a team that went to – the uh, Western Conference uh, Finals last year. They got beat out eventually by the winner of the Schmaltz Cup, the Lakeshore Canadians. Okay. So it was difficult. Uh, I felt that that team was going to be even that much better this year. And so far they are, they're five and old. Okay. So it was difficult to leave them. And it took me a couple of months to decide whether I wanted to go or not. Um, I went out to the first skate with Del High, uh, their first tryouts back in August. And, uh, I decided then that I could probably help this team and I would come out and, and help them out. Um, after a couple of practices, I brought out some of the drills that I thought they should be doing. So eventually, without uh, being able to find a coach, I took over coaching as well with uh, some terrific help from uh, the other guys on the bench as well. Yeah. So, I mean, what did you like what you saw in, in those first two skates? Like, I mean, I imagine you had a hand in kind of the the picking of the the squad that headed into the first regular season game. I did. Uh, the first skate that we had, uh, we probably had five or six goaltenders <laughs> and 10 skaters. And I thought, oh, we're off to a terrible start. But I think word got around about what we were doing with the tryouts. And each week we got more and more. And got to the point before we started our first game that we had to cut some players. Right. And, um, you know, what is, uh, like, have you kind of seen what, like, is, is there like a general reaction to the fact that the Delhi Flames are, are, are in Delhi and they're going to be playing there? Like, have you noticed anything word of mouth? Like, is, is there excitement? I think amongst the players, there's excitement. And so they've told their friends, who have told their friends, and, and they've come out to our skates. Um, so it got easier to pick a team. Mm -hmm. We're still going to make some additions. Right. Now, after uh, the result on Saturday of 7 nothing, we have to look at some different ways of doing things. But our goaltender stood on his head. We were outshot 51 to 22, I believe it was. Yeah. And uh, I think the first period, you know, they were up 5 nothing. It was more first game jitters. Sure. The game just sticks too tight, you know, just getting used to the league. But in the second uh, period, they only got one goal on us. Third period, only one goal on us. And as I said, our goaltender stood on his head. Yeah, like, can, can you, yeah, speak to that a little bit. I mean, obviously, a 44 save performance in a, in a 7 nothing loss, the numbers are kind of, well, you know, okay, he allowed seven, but he stopped 44. He was busy probably practically all night. Um, I guess from a coach's perspective, how impressive were you by his performance? I was very impressed. I, of the seven goals, he only let in two soft ones that okay. I recall. So, I mean, he did really well. Um, 
could have been a different outcome if he had more support from his defense. But as I said earlier, they're learning how to play the game in this league. Right. And a lot of them haven't played together before. So it, sure. it will come. They will gel together. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, anytime a, a team is put together, first game, is, uh, w- when you don't have that exhibition game even to get your feet under you or even shake off any sort of midsummer rust, I mean, that, that can be tough. Um, you know, no question about it. Uh, obviously, so take is there takeaways from that game that you could take into your second game this upcoming Saturday in Stratford against the Fighting Irish? Well, I, I think we look at some of the players who, who worked really hard to maybe do some adjustments as far as line combinations are concerned. Uh, we'll end up adding a couple of the forwards that didn't play in that game for Saturday against Stratford. So it'll take some adjustment and it'll take time for them to, to gel with their line mates. Sure. Of course, naturally. I mean, that, that is, it's, it's all a feeling out process, right, Doug? I mean, it, you know, you guys, you got to figure out who's comfortable playing with who, um, you know, who clicks on a, on an adjustment and on the line, on any given line there, there is a feeling out process. No question about that. Um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, I mean, again, putting a team together can always be kind of difficult. Um, was did you know much about this league before you guys got involved? Like, uh, did you see much of last year? Or was there anything that surprised you from the first game that you played? I watched a couple of games. I actually did the play-by-play on streaming for a couple of the Thunder and Alora games. Okay. Um, so I'm a, a bit familiar, familiar with uh, the league itself. Um, we didn't know what to expect with from Tilbury. Um, and they probably didn't expect... Uh, from what we gave them as well yeah like I mean the thing that I noticed a lot about this league is that it's the speed there's a lot of skill to be had um you know and again I think the the the, the real kind of measuring stick for you guys into how like how this league is is when you do play Stratford as a team that played last year they know the league uh, they have one season under their belt obviously like the other five teams uh, but I think that'll be a definite measuring stick for you guys. Would that be accurate? Oh, I would think so. Um, depending on how many guys Stratford has back, right? Uh, I think it would be a real test for us. But we know now what to expect from the league and how to play in this league. So I'm hopeful it will be a different result on Saturday. Now, I, I happen to notice also here that it says that your home opener isn't until Saturday, October 22nd. Um, when you take on the Plattsville Lakers, starting on the road for the first few games, how difficult that can that, can that be for a team starting out of the gate to be playing on the road and not in front front of home fans at your home arena? Yeah, it can be difficult. I mean, it's very good when you have fan support and and they're there to support you, especially in your home arena. So there is that part of it being on the road for the first few games that you don't have that fan base. And, and sometimes the fan base could be that extra person on the ice. Right. And then like, have you guys really, like, has there been discussions about anything that you may have planned for your home opener at this point, or is that still coming together? Uh, we're still working on that. We have a few ideas in mind. Okay, perfect. Um, and then, yeah, one of the guys that I did, uh, so as a person who was in this league last year for a little while there, uh, we had a guy in Stratford by the name of Mason Cromwell. And, and, you know, he, he's just an outstanding guy, uh, great hockey player on the ice, great person off the ice. And he's obviously a part of your organization. Um, you know, he's wearing a couple different hats, uh, if you will. Um, how important has he been in uh, this process for you? Mason has been extremely important to the hockey club. We signed him on as a player. But if we don't have him in the lineup, he'll be on the bench with me. Um, We decided that him and I had to talk about helping out with the coaching part of it. So we had one of our skates and I let Mason run a couple of drills and he did so well with it. I said, Mason, you can run the rest of the practice. He's a leader in in the dressing room, not only as as a co-coach, but also um, as a leader, as a player in the dressing room. And then have Mason on board. Yeah, and then obviously there has to be a little bit of a of a nice touch with him having had experience in this league last year. I think have you noticed like a lot of the guys maybe drawing off that or you yourself even? Oh yes, they they do because Mason is a voice in the dressing room. 
the guys listen to him. They have a lot of respect for him as well. And uh, I guess from a coach's perspective also, since you had first, uh, you know, best seat in the house for the game on, on Saturday there against Tilbury, was there any player that stood out that maybe surprised you as, as you know, having an, a nice game? Like, uh, was there anybody that maybe you said, oh, I'm surprised that he played as well as he did? Um, the one guy who stood out for me who worked really hard, I thought every shift, him and his line mates, was Wade Metz. Uh, okay. Metz played for me at Conestoga College, and uh, I thought him and his line mates worked really well in that game. Perfect. And obviously, yeah, like, I mean, I find, you know, and I'm not speaking as a coach or having an expert, being an expert or anything, but when you do find those guys that click, you, you tend to ride them pretty good. D uh, Doug, you've been involved in hockey for a long time. It seems like you, you have a really good knowledge of the game, a real passion. What is it that keeps coming you back? What, what is it that you love about this game the most? That's a good question. I think the ultimate goal is to win a championship. Right. Uh, I've come close a couple of times uh, as a general manager and I've won tournaments coaching college hockey, but I think it's the passion of working with the players, developing the players, uh, seeing players that go beyond their potential. No, that's, that's, that, that, that's a great answer. Um, I, no, I, I could, couldn't agree with you more on that. Um, in terms of uh, this season, obviously Delhi comes in like I mean it's an unknown uh, and as an expansion group with four other teams. Um, you know what would uh, I guess if you had to define a successful season uh, for for your first year in this league, how would you how would you say that? First of all, I, I think it would be a success to make the playoffs. Okay, and the playoffs is like a second season, mm -hmm. and anything is possible. So, first of all, our ultimate goal is to make the playoffs. Second goal would be to win the Sleeman Cup. Yeah. I mean, for an expansion team, that would be something to achieve. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so, again, we've been speaking with uh, head coach, general manager, Doug Cooper of the uh, Delhi Flames. Uh, Doug, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you guys hit the ice again on the road this upcoming Saturday, 4.30, William Wall Memorial Arena in Stratford again. Delhi Flames in the Stratford Fighting Irish. You can find that game live on Sportify as well. Uh, Doug, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for doing this, pal. We appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. Folks, we're uh, continuing here on the Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast, uh, episode number three. Uh, we're very pleased to be joined at this time by my guest. He's from the Aaron Blitz. His name is Clayton Patrick. Uh, Clayton, it's uh, great to have you on board. Thanks for uh, taking the time out to do this and uh, welcome to the podcast, Paul. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know what? It was uh, we we definitely felt like we had to have you on here because, uh, like I said, like we were saying before we started, uh, you're a trivia question forever. If there ever is going to be one, uh, the first goal in Aaron Blitz Washel history. We'll get to that in a little minute. We'll get to the goal in a second. Um, just um, take us through kind of this process and how you got involved with the Aaron Blitz, and I guess what the excitement level has been, obviously leading into the first game. Yeah, I mean, uh, getting to play with Aaron, it was uh, definitely a whirlwind at the start of the season. Um, I was actually skating with the uh, the Fighting Irish at first because um, okay. I'm pretty close with Brad Crisco, and uh, yeah. I knew he had gone over there, and so I was trying to take my chances on that route. Um, long story short, uh, I'm not playing with Stratford, and instead right. uh, I had another friend who was going to Aaron's tryouts, and he's like, hey, you know what? You, you got to come out here, man. You got to skate with these guys, see uh, see if you can show them up, see if uh, you can do anything. I'm like, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to show them up, but uh, I'll definitely come take my chances in this league. So um, went to the skates, and uh, I guess obviously they were they were pretty happy with what they saw. And so uh, I I maybe played the inner squad game and won one other tryout, and uh, they, they offered me a signing, and I'm, I'm taking it because, uh, I mean, this is probably going to be the highlight of my career for hockey. So uh, super happy that uh, that they wanted to be on the team and uh, super glad to be there. Yeah, that sounds like quite a whirlwind experience. I, I apologize if I sound a little bit unaware. I was unaware of how that kind of went down, but that's quite an experience for you. Did you play any sort of high-level hockey before this, Clayton? I couldn't really notice. Nothing official. I uh, I played one game with uh, the Milverton Four Wheel Drives in the WOAA last yeah. December. Um, okay. 
that league shut down from, from COVID for well, I think it was the fourth lockdown and went straight to playoffs. So I couldn't right. play. Um, aside from that, the last time I played organized hockey would have been Kitchener minor hockey, but, uh, I never played anything higher than house league select. And I dropped out at the age of 15 and just played beer leagues after that. Fair enough. And, um, so in the first few skates and obviously the first game, like, is it, what, did you find that tough? Like, did you have to shake off a little bit of rust early on? Um, speed wise, I was probably okay. It's more, uh, I've, I've been so used to playing like regular men's league and shinnies and stuff like that right. recently. So it's more just the mentality of, um, you know, making those smart plays in the faster pace that the games played at and, uh, keeping my head up as well. Cause it's been a while since I played contact hockey. Sure. Um, so I just ma- making that transition into, uh, into this level of game. It was, it was all about keeping my head up and making the smart play, but, um, I'd say I, I transitioned pretty quickly into the, uh, into the team and into the, the, um, the game itself. Yeah. Like this is a whole new beast, man. And that's, that is like, you know, and again, no easy task, obviously going into Alora banner raising night. Um, you know, and again, you guys, you might, you know, a couple bad breaks in the first period, next thing you know, you're down seven. Like, t- like, was that just such a whirlwind? Like, did you find that you were overwhelmed or was it what you were expecting? I guess it's, uh, I, I mean, going against uh, the defending champs in, in Alora, we, we knew it was going to be a tough game to, to start off and we play them another three times this October. So it's, it's going to be a pretty tough October, but uh, it just means we got a lot to prove as a team. Um, I'd say realistically, we, we just wanted to see if we can hold them off as long as we could. And uh, we actually did a pretty decent job in the, in the first few periods, but uh I mean, the score doesn't really reflect that. Uh, they capitalized on all of our mistakes and uh, definitely, definitely showed us that they are they're a tough team to play against. So um, next few times that we play them, we're just hoping that we can keep holding them off and take it period by period and uh, try to improve from that point. Well, and, and I've said this before, Clayton, like uh, the thing is 15 to two, that's only one win in the win column, right? Like it's one oh, yeah. win, one loss doesn't count for more wins than it should like it's just one game and there's lots of room for growth and lots of room for improvement um well like was there anything that surprised you maybe the pace like did you know a lot about this league from last year i i knew a bit from last year i did get out to watch a couple of uh alora's games um i did see a couple of the playoff games as well so i knew it was going to be pretty fast and pretty competitive um I think playing the game itself against Alora, like we, we did a good job of holding them off. And even the first period, I don't think they got their first goal until maybe nine or 10 minutes in. So okay. it, it definitely surprised us and it surprised them, but uh, just Alora was very, very, um, very difficult to play against. And they, they knew that we would break down eventually. So we're a team that's played together three times and they're a team that sure. has played together much longer than that, even, even before the Washels started. Yeah. Um, so it was just tough game of hockey overall, and uh, it can only go up from here. Absolutely. Pal. That's a good attitude, man. Positive attitude. So you got to have in terms of going into the next one, um, you know, and that's going to be, that's going to be a task all of its own. Take us through the goal because that, that like I, I watched the highlight, it's a great goal that you guys, you score. Take me through that, uh, that sequence there. Cause Jacob makes an unbelievable play. Oh yeah. It was, it was great. I mean, the defensemen were pretty close to holding it into the blue line. I think, uh, I think Jacob uh, was able to get enough of a stick on it. He chipped it up. And next thing you know, we're flying down the ice with a two on one there. So here I am thinking, okay, I, I just want to drive the net and either give him an option for, for a passing lane. If, uh, if I can get down low enough, or if he wants to take that shot, like I want to be there for that rebound. And he makes a good move cutting in the middle and shooting through the defense. So a uh, bit of a screen uh, I'm assuming. And uh, I got lucky with that rebound because it just popped right onto my stick and I had a wide open net to just pop her in. Hey, well, trust me, sometimes hitting the open net could be harder than you think, right? You can't be just oh, thinking, sure. Oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to score every time. Right? I mean, Absolutely. We, we could talk to Patrick Stefan about that. Um, <laughs> Uh, but uh so yeah so you guys is actually next game on the ice i just happened to notice here is saturday october 15th it's going to be your home opener against Alora. so you have a chance a little bit of revenge there and they're going to be playing in your barn um i don't know if you would be able to tell us this but like what's the react like what's the community reaction been to this team and aaron and um like are they excited like what have you noticed I, um, I personally haven't been to Aaron. I've only driven through the town a couple of times, but enough, uh, I've heard nothing but good things about our fans. They're super pumped to have a team there. Um, they're super excited to, uh, to 
have us uh, playing. And so I'm just happy to represent them. And uh, I think the home opener is going to be an absolute blast. You know, we're going to have a ton of fans, ton of energy in the building. And, um, you know, I don't know if we can, uh, we can pull a comeback uh, win off of that 15 to two, but uh, it's definitely something we're, we're going to try for. And uh, I think having that home ice advantage, you know, it's going to be a different game for sure. Well, and hey, if, if you got to use it as part of positive motivation, I mean, you, there's plenty to have there. Um, what kind of what kind of hockey player are the Aaron Blitz getting in you, Clayton? Like, well, what do you bring to the table that you think is your best asset? Probably my speed and my shot. I mean, I've I've always been a pretty fast uh, skater. Um, not so much agile, but north and south, I I'm pretty great at just flying down the uh, the off wing and. Uh, my, my shot's probably my other best attribute. I, I shoot pretty hard for someone my size and my age. So, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, just putting me on the off wing, like I was playing with, uh, with Jacob and uh, Jack there, um, it was a good chance for me to put myself in a good shooting position and, and just try to hit the net as much as I can. I, I think that's, uh, that's my best aspect. Well, I, I like that. And I think that's great. You seem like you're a pretty positive attitude guy. And I mean, you know, I think, no matter how down in the dumps you may get on any certain cer certain game, if the score gets out of hand, like the morale of the team is going to dictate how you bounce back and the course of the rest of the year. Do you have any expectations on how you guys ha uh, fare out in year number one? Yeah. I mean, me and the boys are getting along great. We, we got a bus for uh, the games and even just coming back from Alora, we're all buzzing on the bus, having a good time, even though we, we had a pretty big loss there, but uh, it didn't seem like anybody was down in the, in the dumps and we weren't uh, really upset about anything. We're, we're all buzzing. We're all having a great time. And I think that's really going to help with our team chemistry. Cause I mean, the, the friendlier are we with each other and the more supportive, like that's really going to help with our team bonding. So, right. um, you know, I, I definitely heard uh, with, with our GM and our uh, coach talk and uh, they have high hopes for our team finishing in the top of the league. And I want to see if we can press for that. Uh, I don't know if we can take down the defending champs uh, like like that, but uh, if we can get ourselves up there and get in the top half of the league for for this year, I would I would love to see that, and I, I think we can do it. Yeah, a hey, twenty three games left in a season, so oh, long exactly. year, and there's a lot of opportunity here and nowhere to go but up. Um, now you mentioned your relationship with Brad Crisco. Uh, you know, if Brad's a great guy. I've talked to him multiple multiple times. A good friend of mine. Um, I guess like how how important is his uh, influence been on you with this league and, and have you leaned on him a little for knowledge? Uh, definitely leaned on him. I mean, I, I work with him and play hockey with him in men's league. I've, uh, I've known him for six, almost seven years now. So, uh, we definitely cool. feed off a lot of each other and, uh, uh, playing the men's league. It's, it's completely different from playing in here. So, uh, I mean, when we see each other on the ice, it's going to be a little bit different, but, uh, <laughs> I try to pick up a little bit of, uh, his game and, and see if they're things I can pick up and learn from. And I I'm sure he's picked up on a few things for me. And so it's, it's good for building, um, off of each other and, and kind of knowing what, uh, other teams are going to play like. So I think it's a good relationship that we got. And, uh, we we've definitely learned from each other in terms of our hockey. Cause I mean, we're both in this league now and, uh, you look back a couple of years ago, we're, we're both just playing men's league. So, uh, definitely a lot of growth there. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of like the rest of the league, do you have any familiarity throughout the rest of the league that you've noticed? Or like, is there anybody that you've played with before, like besides Brad? Yeah, I've uh, I've recognized a couple of names. Um, I did recognize one of the names on uh, Delhi. I think their goaltender, I used to work with him a few years ago. A um, okay. couple of boys on Plattsville I went to high school with him. One guy, um, uh, I think it was Matt Crane, uh, just signed with Plattsville. Um, okay. Yeah, I know I played Matt. hockey with him a couple of times. So definitely going to see a lot of familiar faces in this league and it's it's just going to bring a lot more fun and excitement out onto the ice yeah um, matt matt crane he's a good buddy of mine as well i know he played uh for lucknow in double a and uh i know him and uh, well him tyler ryan uh, out of uh T tilbury there um there's a lot of these guys that have been around and 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 continued on and that sort of thing and now they find themselves in this league i think that's really cool to have familiarity and uh, to build rivalries if you will as well oh for sure absolutely all right um and i guess the last question i have for you before i let you go because i know you're tight for time um this game like i mean you know you obviously love this game and there's obviously got to be a reason for that i wondered if you could shed some light on why why it is you play this game um yeah i mean hockey has always been a huge part of my life uh there was a point where i was close to hanging up the skates forever um 
back in high school in uh, 2013, actually, I was just having a real bad year. Um, my last few years of minor hockey, like collectively, I think through three years, I had five wins total. Uh, a lot of coaches were sandbagging teams in evaluations and stacking them and thinking this is, this is house league. Like, what are you guys doing out here? And I was ready to hang them up for good. And um, I don't know what kind of pushed me towards that. Uh, I just started watching hockey a little bit differently in the NHL. I, uh, I went from cheering from the Leafs for uh, to cheering to the avalanche um, cause that was McKinnon's rookie year. And uh, of course. I don't know, kind of just a different perspective and watching uh, different players and, I, I grew attached to a couple of guys on the avalanche uh, and Gabe Landeskog and Matt Duchesne. And uh, I think that was a big influence on me because um, I started analyzing the way I played a little bit differently and, uh, and kind of just taking it easy, I guess. And when I quit minor hockey and started playing a uh, couple of like no name leagues and stuff like that, uh, I was just out there for fun and I was trying to trying to take it a little bit lighter. And um, that, that really helped me find a new love for the game. And from that point on, uh, it wasn't too long after that I did meet uh, Brad in, in men's league. Uh, I actually walked into a, um, the the local rink to us. Uh, I think it was a Monday night or something like that. And uh, it was a snowstorm that night. I was asking teams if they needed spare bodies because I figured I could get some extra ice. And first room I walked into, there was six guys in the room. And I was like, hey, you guys need another body. And uh, it was Brad who turned around and he's like, yeah, we could use a guy. And we ended up uh, winning that game. I had like a goal and assist. And uh, from that point, he's like, so, uh, you coming out for the rest of the year or what? And from there on, I've been playing with him and, uh, I don't know, just found a new love for the game and, uh, found a new group of people, uh, to play with. And, uh, I've, I've had nothing but good times since then. So it's, uh, it's definitely a feel, a good feeling to, to get back into that game and just, uh, feel like I can be myself and play at a different level and, uh, do something that I love with a different perspective. Dude, I love that answer. Everything about it, man. And yeah, I like to say, Big shout out to Brad. He's he's a he's a beauty, and uh, oh, I'm glad that you guys are such good friends. And uh, I appreciate you sharing that story. Uh, Aaron Blitz, next time on the ice, uh, we have uh, Saturday, October the fifteenth. Their home opener at Center Two Thousand in Aaron against uh, the Allure Rocks in a rematch. Uh, Clayton, this has been a pleasure, dude. Uh, we'll catch up with you throughout the course of the season, no doubt. And uh, best of luck to the Aaron Blitz. Thanks for doing this. Awesome. Thanks very much, Andrew. All right, folks, continuing on with our interviews for this uh, Western Ontario Super Rocket League podcast, episode number five, uh, number three. Uh, pleased to be joined at this time by uh, the uh, m- uh, minder of the crease uh, from the Tilbury Bluebirds, goaltender Ryan Apolodar- Apolodari. Uh, he joins us uh, from uh, the Tilbury Bluebirds. Uh, Ryan, it's great to have you on here. Thanks a lot for uh, stopping in and uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Uh, truly. Uh... It's an honor already. I know it's short, short stint so far for us <laughs> only playing one game, but uh, no, I'm excited. Uh, yeah. Like I say, lots to talk about, obviously, um, you know, you guys being one of the four expansion teams, um, take us through like kind of what that process has been like, how it kind of all came together for you to become a member of the Tilbury Bluebirds. Well, honestly, uh, I've never heard of this league before. I know it's, a, it's a newer league, but uh, leading up to it, um, so coming out of Leamington, you know, being an overager, uh, starting off with the university team, uh, me being kind of third guy there, obviously expected to be that. Um, and then this opportunity kind of just popped up and uh, my coach there just kind of, he he, he said that it's a good opportunity then, um, then just kind of sitting and not really bettering myself. So he uh, told me about this opportunity, how I could kind of just get minutes in, get a little more mature. And uh, I met with uh, Joe and he uh, kind of just broke it all down and said kind of what this team's about and in this league. And uh, I was excited to join. And then I was able to uh, practice with the guys that met everybody. And it was just a great uh, first impression to myself. And then obviously our past game, uh, you can see that there's a lot of talent with this team and everyone wants to win and who doesn't like winning. So it was kind of like a no brainer for me to get that chance to kind of play uh, and a chance to win. Did you, so did you have any familiarity with this league or even any of the other guys on your team uh, coming into this, or is this all fresh for you? 
Uh, the league itself was all fresh. I honestly had to Google search everything about <laughs> uh, the league and the team. And uh, I mean, me playing in Leamington last year was kind of used to that small town kind of hockey where uh, it was uh, some a city, like the town was really proud of and took a lot of uh, like the town just found it. They they love everything about it. Right. So yeah. I heard uh, Tilbury had a team. And uh, I did, did some research on it. And uh, I I honestly, I knew two guys coming into, uh, into this year on it. Uh, McKibben, Cade McKibben, who yeah. was my captain in Leamington. Okay. And uh, Steph Crevier, who played on LaSalle, who's also my age. Okay. Uh, we're going to be uh, joining me in Tilbury. But other than that, everything was fresh. Everything was, uh, it was all new. All new. I've never played at that rink before. Never heard of uh, any of the teams we play against. So it was really... It was almost like a fresh start kind of thing. So, do you, do you think there's a like I, I I find that really interesting because if you come in and you're familiar with a lot of people, or if you're you know if you you know if you played against them or whichever, you have kind of a different perspective than coming into this fresh. Is there advantages and disadvantages? I guess. Uh, I think the uh, one of the advantages were uh, expectations. I think would uh, kind of like this fresh start. It's like a whole new way to prove yourself right. in every game and not a lot of people like playing with the older guys and no one really knows who you are or the the town itself uh you're you're new right so uh i just i thought it was a good opportunity to kind of start like a new chapter and just kind of develop that relationship with the guys and the fans and that whole city so. Yeah. And like, I mean, take us through that. Like, I mean, it's one thing to open up on the road, which Delhi had to do in their first game for you guys mm -hmm. to open up at home. What was the atmosphere like? And obviously, yeah, take us through it. I mean, you're a trivia question forever. If there is going to be one in terms of getting that first shutout uh, yeah. for the Tilbury Bluebirds in Washell history, and also the first shutout of the season in Washell in the league this year. So take us through that experience for you. Honestly, like uh, going into the game, uh, we didn't know what to expect, right? We knew we were going to have passionate fans. We knew that, but uh, the the outcome that kind of that that we saw that night was crazy. It was uh, jam packed. It was loud. Everyone was having a great time. Uh, I also heard they kind of ran out of beverages up there too. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I did that, hear that. that yeah, that kind of speaks for itself. But um, <laughs> uh, no, it was a great atmosphere. Uh, you could tell even when uh, we got the we got a chance to score a few goals so we were a lot of, we were we were able to hear the crowd and and even after that first goal like you could tell how passionate the fans were and the boys just fed off it and just led to a great game and then we everyone kind of just worked together and uh luckily came out with team win and uh we're fortunate enough to get the shutout too which I know the guys were passionate about to get for me but I was happy that we won and everyone was uh having fun and enjoying the first game for sure and yeah, would you say now that you've gotten that first W, maybe even the first shutout on a personal level, that sort of like the pressure's off? Like, do you feel like a little bit is, as, of relief, I guess, from that result? Uh, I, I wouldn't really say the pressure's off. I would say more of like a confidence level. It was uh, sure. it was better for me. Uh, okay. I, I, for some reason, like kind of when you get into games and playing for so long, pressure's kind of like a a thing of the past like you, you don't really get nervous once you're into it and uh, I think just like the confidence of uh the getting getting the confidence of the guys and just uh them knowing that they could be comfortable with me back there and just kind of get your feet wet in in the game and the new league and with all the older guys being the young one I think that was a uh a very uh important part for our first game and then like you said luckily uh the shutout just kind of made made it a little bit more to talk about after so well and like that's got to be pretty great for you too with all those guys fighting out there for you I mean you had the best seat in the house for a seven nothing victory did was there anybody that stood out like any of your teammates that impressed you like you know from back there and seeing them play oh honestly like uh me not knowing much about anybody uh they all kind of really impressed me like it was kind of a different playing style uh right. me being used to playing with uh, 16, sure. 17 year olds the year year before in Leamington. Now playing with guys who are perhaps in their 30s, late late 20s. Right. Uh, everybody kind of just all had that jump, whether it was being physical, goal scoring, uh, or just kind of getting the boys going in the room and stuff. And the leadership was great. 
but uh, like like you said, we have so many skilled players, and and just the defense too made my job ten times easier. So it was it was it was great to see that too. Yeah, and like I mean, again, getting that first W, getting the shutout, team chemistry, team bonding. That's gonna be so crucial, especially for a team coming in fresh, like you said, an expansion group going up against. I think when you guys start to go up against teams that have been there for the first year like the one you're going to face on Saturday when you go into Tilsonburg for their home opener against the Tilsonburg Thunder. I think it'd be fair to say that that's going to be a measuring stick game for you. Would you agree? Yeah, I would, I would uh, definitely agree with that. Like uh, we, our team kind of saw the preseason rankings and kind of took that to heart. Not, not anyone, not everyone was happy about us being ranked that low. Cause we feel like we got stuff to prove now. And sure. uh, I know that first game was was a tough measuring stick because we are both new teams and um, we're just excited to kind of get familiar with all the teams and kind of get a taste of what this league is going to be like, what it's going to take to win and who uh, the competition level is definitely going to increase as we, as, as we play more games. So we're excited to, uh, especially on the road too, uh, we're excited to kind of get that into that mojo where we could uh, learn about ourselves as a road team. Cause I know it's always harder to go into a barn, and uh, steal the game. Uh, so we're we're excited for that opportunity. We know it's not going to be we're not going to have the roaring crowd behind us this time, but we're excited. We're excited to definitely start start that part of our uh, journey this year. Yeah, and uh, speaking from experience, I know what the barns like in Tilsonburg when they pack it tight. It's uh, it's a great atmosphere there. Definitely lively. They'll be shaking the building for sure. It's a great arena to play in as well. So you'll love that. Um, you know, and again. There's 23 games left for you guys in the season. Obviously, yeah, to put a measuring stick up there saying, oh, yeah, 7 nothing, we, we we dominated or whichever. You badly outshot them. The, the, the shot differential is, is was phenomenal. Um, mm. You know, again, that could be also a little bit of pressure, um, you know, to keep delivering. And obviously, hopefully, you guys can uh, measure up to that as well. Um, yeah. For you, uh, you know, again, goaltender is a very tough position. Um, you know, you were speaking a little bit about this, being that you spent a few years with the Leamington Flyers and now coming into this league. Um, again, speak on the difference. Like, what was the biggest difference that you noticed in your first game as compared to the time when you spent with the Flyers? I would say, honestly, like the size and the speed was uh, definitely something to manage throughout the game. Um, going from being the oldest on the team to the youngest is always tough. Like <laughs> you kind of feel like a rookie again. And sure. uh, and even just being out there and just kind of getting a feel for how how this league is and the uh, the type of players it has. Uh, definitely like compared to Leamington, it was uh, – I feel like the hockey is just as good, but – it's more mature. Like you, right. you see guys are developed and they've been, they've been to whatever levels they're at, whether it's an X level uh, overseas or some other league, you can right. see that um, they, they're definitely, they got experience. So right. uh, it's not going to be just like an easy, easy win any night. You can't just walk in and try to steal one. So we got to, we got to come prepared every time. And uh, I think that we have, we have the keys to, uh, to take it to take it far this year and uh, that's our goal honestly from right from the start joe even said uh we we're, we're trying to win right so we uh i know off the first game it's tough to kind of judge mm -hmm. uh how, how we see our team but we know there's stuff to work on we know uh at practice we got to go through some things clean some stuff up because when you get into the later stages of the season and uh teams start kind of clamping down defensively and stuff you're not going to come around to seven goals every game or 60 shots because right. like you said, we played a new team. We were a new team. So there's obviously stuff to clean up on. So we're excited to kind of get into that role and uh, we're excited for the next opportunity we get. So we're ex looking forward to Saturday and then hopefully we could kind of get the same outcome. Hey man, ad adapting is everything. If you can't mm -hmm. adapt in this league, you won't go far. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the difference, obviously, I'd imagine playing with 16 year old guys is that their biggest problem is who they're taking to the prom. The guys you're playing with now, their biggest problem is whether or not their kid eats or goes to sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's for <laughs> Big sure. Difference that's, there, right? I've never seen that. Like when I was uh warming up, we had some some of our guys, their kids were just kind of help helping us warm up and they're picking up our pucks. And I thought it was just hilarious that I uh, kind of go from that playing with children to now 
children are involved in in the room and uh, <laughs> that's with us. so it's awesome hey man life moves quickly if you don't stop yeah. and pay attention every now and then oh, right? yeah. like, something like true. that i can't remember the exact one but you get the gist <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> but yeah no and like do you have any sort of like expectations for how you want the year to go like uh, what are you hoping for maybe even not like not just on a team level but on a personal level well, obviously, everyone's got that goal that they want to go far. You want to win championships. But uh, I think right now our main focus isn't to look too forward and just kind of focus on what we could do today and game by game. And I think that uh, our team is uh, everyone's everyone's buying in and wanting the same goal, which I think is very important for every team. So you can see that there's no uh, slack and mm -hmm. that needs to be picked up. So everyone's kind of putting in their fair share and everyone's working hard and um obviously on a personal personal level i i want to be the best i can be right so i want to show up for my teammates too so uh my goal honestly is to be the best i can be and lead them to uh as far as we can and hopefully come up with a championship i love that answer man that's a good answer um in terms of like your time with leamington can you reflect on like maybe a great moment that that you recall from there like what stood out for you oh i i we don't have enough time for that. I'd say <laughs> uh, my experience there was uh, nothing short than awesome. Like it was, I loved it. It made uh, my, my, my move from AAA to junior uh, very easy. And I kind of just uh, didn't, it was kind of like a last minute thing. I didn't really expect to play in Leamington. It was always since I'm from Windsor, it was right. kind of like LaSalle was my focus. And then right. this opportunity just popped up and it was just like, from the coaches down to the players in the room, the uh, GM and all the staff. I just, I, I, I look back now and it's the best, one of the best decisions I've ever made for sure in my hockey uh, career. But uh, like, like just from the room, the amount of friendships I've made, it's just what we've been through the, especially dealing with this during COVID and stuff, sure. losing, losing a few years, which we look back and I wish I could get those years back because I feel like I'd have 10 times more things to say about it because of the two years that uh, right. we would gain from that. But uh, like I said, like nothing, nothing I could say will uh, suffice what I have, what I experienced there and, and what uh, I, I learned, I grew as a person there. Uh, don't get me wrong, the drive never got easier. That's for sure. But uh, <laughs> sure, on that on that highway, three forty five minutes down and back. But uh, I I had a great time right from my goalie coach all the way up to GM and all the staff, arena people. I've just made friendships that uh, you can't you can't forget about because of how passionate that town is, the fans. Uh, it just it was it was awesome, and I I loved every second I was there. That's awesome, man. I love to hear stuff like that. That's why I ask those types of questions. Yeah. Uh, you can see Ryan Polidori and the Tilbury Bluebirds next in action this upcoming Saturday. It's the Tilsonburg Thunders home opener. Uh, that goes at 730 Tilsonburg Community Center. Ryan, good luck in that one and uh, good luck the rest of the way. We appreciate you doing this and we'll catch up throughout the rest of the season. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for having me and uh, I look forward to hearing you throughout the year. Okay, so back here on the Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast, uh, Andrew Rogers, your host. I uh, just want to uh, give one uh, final thank you to Doug Cooper, to Clayton uh, Pederak, and to Ryan uh, Polidari uh, for coming on to the Western Ontario Super Hockey League podcast episode number three and interviewing with us and speaking with us. And we really appreciate their time and wish them well throughout the course of the season. As mentioned, we'll uh, make sure to catch up with them throughout the course of the regular season and in the playoffs. It should be a lot of fun, though, the rest of the way in this uh, Washable year number two. Uh, but, yeah, let's uh, get you get, get you again, once again, refresh you uh, for what is upcoming this upcoming weekend. We have the Tilsonburg Thunder and the Strathroy Jets going on Friday, October the 7th, from the Gemini Sportsplex in Strathroy. Uh, Alvinston goes to Alora on Friday as well at 830, the Alora and District Community Center. Uh, the Delhi Flames travel to Stratford to play the Stratford Fighting Irish Echoes on Saturday, October the 8th at 4.30. That's a 4.30 start. Make note. And then you have the Tilbury Bluebirds and the Tilsonburg Thunder. That goes at 7.30, Tilsonburg Community Center. Now, again, if you guys can't actually physically be at the arena to watch these games, make sure to also go to the website, uh, www.washall.com, and uh, make sure to follow the links to, uh, to watch live. Uh, these games are, are all broadcast on Sportify, and uh, 
they're excellent. They really are. It's great to be able to watch these games and watch the, the fantastic action that is the Western Ontario Super Rocket. So like I said, uh, thanks again for you all at home and uh, for everybody watching uh, the Western Ontario Super Hockey Podcast. I'm Andrew Rogers, your host, that's saying good night, uh, good, goodbye uh, for now. And uh, we'll see you guys again next week for another uh, exciting episode of the Washington Podcast. Uh, like I said, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Take care.